Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Ham Nation is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Ham Nation is brought to you by ICOM. For more information, visit ICOMAmerica.com slash Ham Nation. This is Ham Nation, episode number 181 for January 28th, 2015. Sing along with Gordo. Good evening. Welcome to another action-packed adventure of Ham Nation. We've got our friend Gordo back after being out in the desert for a while. Gordo, it's good to see you back. Well, thanks so much. And I'll tell you, the chat room has kept all of the quartz festers uh, rolling with uh, the annex we saw on the screen after uh, Randy successfully uploaded us. Hey, good news. CQ magazine, December issue, 100 plus pages strong. They're going to combine January and February, so we'll have plenty of reading ahead. Good news. So back to you. And then in a few, we're going to show you all the neat things we found out on the desert. Back to you, George. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun, Gordo, and uh, a little extra reading material there for the reading room as well. Well, uh, Don is here, and, you know, Don, we ran into each other this past weekend, and I've got some evidence a little later in the show. Oh, no, you didn't call the insurance company, did you? <laughs> no, no, we wanted to keep them out of it. Hey, look, I I, I love CQ, but I'm a, I'm a little behind. <laughs> Just a, <laughs> still working on this. Still working on this, but you know, there's uh, uh, reread this over and over and over. It's good stuff. Yeah, I love CQ Magazine. Good folks over there. Yeah, we had a good time up in Jackson, George. You and Tommy. That was uh, that was the highlight of my weekend. So uh, thanks for playing. That was that was a lot of fun. Yeah, mine too, Don. And we've also got Dale back with us tonight with some more viewer videos. Dale, how's everything out on the Yellow Brick Road tonight? Hey, doing real well. We've had uh, 70 degrees here. This is about the uh, Third day now that we've had 70-degree weather. Tonight we've got KU basketball. Uh, can't get any better than that, huh? And tonight on uh, the video segment, we've got four great videos. There are some creative people out there. Stay tuned for that when we come up with the video segment, George. Go ahead. Uh, cool. That sounds like a lot of fun, Dale. Well, let's go back to Gordo now and uh, find out what, he's, what he has discovered here. Uh, well, we discovered at Quartz Fest a lot of things that worked great. And we found out some things that you'll see next week that didn't quite work out as well. But let me tell you, something that worked out great at Quartz Fest were the new headsets from uh, Heil Sound, the Pro 7. And uh, Sarah and Bob were just out here a day or so ago and had a nice dinner with them. And I said, I can't believe the audio that this gave us on to the ICOM uh, station that was our uh, W7Q special event. This headset is amazing because no matter what radio you have, you can get the right cabling for it. And they make sure and they've got everything color coded and it worked great. And they also sent along... A hand mic, you know, plain old hand mic that we used at Quartz Fest at the special event station. And uh, we heard that it had great response. Everybody on the air said, oh, my gosh, are you using one of the big uh, Heil mics? And we said, no, we're just using a Heil HMM hand mic. So that's what worked great at Quartz Fest. Um, we had a session on, at Quartz Fest on uh, crimping. And uh, PowerWorks uh, sent us their latest crimpers. And... Um, uh, they worked flawlessly. We had another set from somewhere else, and we broke one of the uh, uh, doodads inside. But the PowerWorks one were uh, going strong and didn't fail in uh, the high winds that we had. They made a good uh, crimp. And by the way, we saw a lot of Chinese radios out there. Nothing wrong with the Chinese radios, but when we asked everybody to switch to a simplex frequency, um, everybody but those with the Chinese radio 
went to there, but the Chinese radios were tough to program. Here's a new one from PowerWorks. It's dual band, about five watts output, quite compact. And what PowerWorks is doing is working with ham radio dealers, and they're encouraging the dealers to go ahead and pre-program for a local area. So we're going to give you a full report on the new Terra uh, Chinese handheld but it's supported by PowerWorks and their help desk. So if you get in a bind on getting things uh, programmed, uh, PowerWorks uh, will uh, help you right out on the phone. Whereas on the other Chinese ones, uh, you may or may not get the help that indeed PowerWorks uh, does so well. A uh, little push to talk button from Ohio Sound. We use that out there at Quartz Fest, and um, that worked well. And everybody was watching us at uh, Quartz Fest, and this comes from Bion of Bionics. This is a 8-watt transceiver built in. Actually, it's a transmitter. And the, uh, no, it's actually a transceiver because it also monitors so it doesn't stomp on someone for APRS. Um, John Arnold, W6GPS, got it all pre-programmed. Uh, we plugged it in. Uh, we uh, added the antenna. And uh, you can either go with the internal uh, dip switches to get you positioned, or you can go ahead and uh, uh, make it live into a GPS. But uh, Bionics is really right on top of uh, cutting edge stuff. So check it out. It's their brand new Bionics uh, transmitter with a built-in TNC for squawking APRS. All right, finally. We had PA systems at Quartz Best, and of course we had the old crystal mics or whatever they were, and they didn't work very well. So we uh, yanked the mics out, and we put on uh, the Bob Heil Bluetooth adapter to his microphone, and what a difference this makes. Runs on a couple of AA batteries, and it links up with the other Bluetooth that plugs into the PA. And I'll tell you, even though the wind was howling at Quartz Best on the last couple of days, we got through loud and clear. So if you're looking for a real nice remote mic wireless, uh, we got about 300 feet before we even got close to exceeding the range of the uh, the Bluetooth. So that's my live Quartz Fest report. You're going to see a whole bunch tonight, uh, George and Don and team. And um, I think you'll uh, see that we had a great time. And as soon as I get the sand out of my hair and my shoes, I promise that uh, we'll give you some short shots maybe uh, next week. Uh, a little different than some of the great shots you're going to see from Randy tonight. Back to you, George. Okay, Gordo. That's uh, great information there. And we have a little clip of the clip that we, well, actually the live stream we wanted to have in the last show. But everybody just looked kind of blurry. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's been <laughs> with, of course. But Randy edited it for us, and we've got a good, clean version here. So let's take a look at that. Oh, there it is. Burning Sand Ham. Maryland, W6MCJ, organized a group of volunteers to build the Burning Ham out of scraps of lumber. Gordo donated four HTs to the burn. Maryland is putting the final touches, getting ready. <laughs> and there was a board that people could write their call signs for the burn. Lighter. lighter, lighter. <laughs> Here we are from Quartz Fest. With the burning sand ham. Hello, this is Randy K7AGE from Quartz Fest. Okay, so we had the burning ham man here tonight. The idea was uh, we saw that in the chat room a couple weeks ago, and we have I don't know about four or five hundred hams out here tonight, Chris. Uh, right close to it. Oops. <laughs> right close to five hundred out here. Step over a little bit. This is Chris KR1. KR1 SS. And Chris is organizing everything here for us doing a great job it's been a fantastic time this is my my is a fire bug he's got this torch here <laughs> Gordo. all right uh, well we're here live uh, live and direct at uh, quartz fest uh, 2015 this is chris's fifth year of rolling it and thanks to the ham nation chat room you said you got to have a ham that's burning so let me check with the hams here did you want a ham that was burning over all right, well, we've got Leo Laporte, we've got Ham Nation viewers rolling, and uh, we are live from Quartz Fest, Arizona, where all the hams in the know are now toasting themselves 
and roasting themselves here at Quartz Fest. All right, uh, back to Randy and his team. Okay, so it's flaming away, great. And it's really burning. We got, uh, what, four HTs on here tonight? It's, uh, it's really burning. Uh-oh, gonna really torch off the HTs here. That's it. Dump it on there. Let her go. There it goes. That's a real hot radio. And you know, I've got to say the best part of Quartz Fest is it's not just a one Burning Man show, but it's a team effort to pull this off. Right now we've got the wind blowing about 30 to 35 miles an hour. Embers are going all the way to uh, Yuma, uh, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> But you know, as hams, we have our obligatory fire extinguisher. Of course, it's out of juice, but uh, nonetheless, it looks good. So again, everybody on the count of three, let's just say ham nation, so they'll never forget us and the burning man. Ready, one, two, three. Ham nation! Woo. There we go, that's great. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> it's been a great week, a lot of great sessions, a lot of great people. Everybody's really helping out. It's a great time. I don't want to get too close to oh, that. It's dude. great, Randy. <laughs> and I'll help you out by putting out your butt that's yeah. on fire. Where's that fire extinguisher? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little cool out here tonight, but it's really warm here by the burning sand ham here. So it's a lot of fun. The HTs, the rubber duckies are getting a little limp. Thank you all for coming. It's been a great time. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> okay, that was a wrap. That came off great. Uh, <laughs> I can't that, believe you not, burned handy talkies. That's uh, not the only right. fun you had there either, was it, Gordo? Didn't didn't you do something else? Um, we, well, there was a lot of things that we did that uh, probably can't be um, uh, televised. But yeah, we did. Uh, we had a little music festival. We had everything at Chords Fest. All right. Well, let's have a little sing along with Gordo. Uh oh. Okay, Gordon's going to do a group song. He's got the whole world in his hands. Now, I can't play and sing at the same time. Actually, I can't do either at the same time. So with instrumentation, we're all going to do, he's got the whole world in his hands, and the words are not hard. Ready? It was Let's bad. Try it one more time. Ready? Hit. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. That's it. In his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Yeah, a little quartz vest juice always helps liven up the crowd. <laughs> Don't quit your day job. Everybody, every. What is it? Got you and me, bro. You and me, bro. Yeah, no, the the harmony, the whole world is hands. I just spaced out. Oh, it was a uh, oh, great. Oh, I got it. I got it. All right. This side, you're going to be the whole world. He's got the whole world in his hands. Center section, you are rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Let's try it. Ready? One, two, three. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. You folks have the melody. And Quartz one Fest more juice time. really one. helps. <laughs> Look at that antenna. 
We're going to start off with Meryl. Yeah. Do you want to take? He's got the whole world. That's what you told me. All right. <laughs> Let them go first. So, everybody, here we go. One, two, three. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world. He's got the whole wide world. He's got the whole wide So, one more time. He's got the whole Give it a little bite. So was it the cactus juice or the desert heat? Uh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a little of both. Okay. <laughs> Some of neither. Well, it looks like y'all had a, a heck of a time there, Gordo. I'm going to have to make it out there one year. The, the whole Ham Nation team needs to make it out there. All those of you in the chat room, get your rear in gear next February. Hey, I'll see you in Yuma, February 20 and 21. I'll see you in Plano, Ham Radio Outlet Grand Opening, March 7th. Palm Springs will be there March 14th. Reno, May 1, 2, and 3 in Dayton. Homeland Security, Oxcoms, 12, 13, and 14, and then Ham Benjamin. We'll see all of you somewhere at one of these ham fests. Back to you, George. Well, thanks, Gordo. Yeah, if if Gordo's going to be in your area, you definitely owe it to yourself to go by and uh, and just experience it. I, I don't know what else I can say about it. Do you, Don? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. It looks like quite the trip, though. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. What's in the news this week? Oh, we've got all manner of, uh, of activities in the news. Why, I believe we have tape. Brian? From Amateur Radio Newsline, report number 1949. These are the Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, January 28th, 2015. We're back. The following is a QST. Uh -huh. We are back. Amateur Radio Newsline report number 1949 with a release date of January 24th, 2015 to follow in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The following is a QST. Michigan gets its own That PRB is the latest launch. Amateur Radio Newsline newscast as it returned last Friday. Skeeter Nash, N5ASH, has taken the reins until Bill Pasternak, WA6ITF, is out of the hospital and back home where he belongs. When you listen, you'll hear a new voice, that of Jerry Goodrich, KF5KRN. We know her as Mrs. Skeeter Nash. Amateur Radio Newsline is truly a family affair, and we are so happy to be back. Finally, a launch date for the newest amateur radio satellite. The AESP-14 is a one-unit CubeSat developed by undergraduate and graduate engineering students at the Technology Institute of Aeronautics in Brazil. The satellite's primary mission is to test the various subsystems in the space environment. It also has an amateur radio experiment developed by the Americana Amateur Radio Club. The satellite was sent to the International Space Station on January 10th by the SpaceX Falcon 9 launch, and it's now awaiting release into space by the GEM orbital deployer on the Kibo Japanese module. So far, no date's been announced for its release. Now, from the What Goes Up Must Come Down file. The small Pico party-type balloon launched from Australia we have been reporting on did not make it home to VK land. It reportedly crashed near Madagascar, just east of Africa. This according to Andy Wynn, VK3YT, who released the balloon from Melbourne on December 27th. He says that it went down early on July 16th, just 25 hours short of three weeks in the air. A number of radio amateurs from South Africa also reported that the tiny floater balloon had stopped flying and was down. It had traveled easterly across to the southern tip of New Zealand, the Pacific Ocean to South America, then to Southern Africa, and had a forecast path back to Australia. That's Skeeter Nash N5ASH. Great news for satellite DXers. The K1N Navassa Island D-Expedition will be on the SO50 ham radio satellite. 
Sean Cusco, KX9X reports that he heard from D-Expedition member Greg Marco, W6IZT. At the time, Marco stated that the D-Expedition will be bringing with it a handheld transceiver and an aero antenna in hopes of making some QSOs on the SO50 ham radio bird. SO50 carries several experiments, including a Mode J FM amateur repeater experiment operating on 145.580 MHz up and 436.800 MHz down. The repeater is available to amateurs worldwide as power permits using a 67.0 Hz PL tone on the uplink for on-demand activation. According to W6IZT, the dates and times of the satellite operation will be dependent on operator availability at the time of a viable pass. Operation will only be on the SO-50 bird, and no other satellites are being considered. Navassa Island is the number one most needed country in the world by HFDXers. Operation is slated for the first two weeks of February. For ongoing updates, just log on to www.navassadx.com. And finally this week, the AWRL Library is now online. This online library is a repository of educational presentations and oral histories. It will initially consist of three major areas. These will include PowerPoint presentations that may be used at club meetings, outreach efforts to the general public or other public presentations, PDFs of general educational material about amateur radio, and oral histories of radio amateurs describing their personal experiences with amateur radio. For the Amateur Radio Newsline, I am Jerry Goodrich, KF5, KRN, in Topeka, Kansas. You'll find the AWRL Library on the web at arrl.org slash library. And that's all from Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news brought to you weekly for over 37 years and counting at www.arnewsline.org. For Bill Pasternak, WA6ITF, Skeeter Nash, N5ASH, and Jerry Goodrich, KF5, KRN, I'm Don Wilbanks, AE5DW. It's good to be back. 73. We'll see you next time here on Ham Nation. Yeah, it is good to be back. And, uh, you know, with um, with uh, there's a lot of big D expeditions going on. Of course, we've got Navassa Island coming up. Uh, I know that a lot of people were trying to uh, contact Iran over the weekend. And on Monday, there was a small M-class solar flare. And uh, Dr. Tamitha Scove, who uh, is uh, otherwise known as the space weather woman, uh, has some information about how that may or may not affect the ham band. So if you're a big-time DXer or, or just a casual operator like uh, a lot of us are, uh, you might want to pay attention to this. Here's here's Dr. Scove. Hi, I'm Tamitha Scove with your solar flare forecast for the week of January 27th. Region 2268 is at it again. It showed up on the East Limb and fired a couple M flares, and then it died down. But now that it's rotating to center disk, activity is picking up again, and it's not alone. There are a couple very fast-growing regions, like Region 2271 and this new region, and these regions are beginning to flare themselves. So we might see more flare activity over the next couple days. Switching to our M flare threat meter, you can see we did have a couple of moderate flares about a week ago, but then activity dropped off. Until the 26th, when the activity is picked back up again, uh, we have that M flare there. You can see it just barely popped over the M flare level, and it wasn't very uh, long in duration, but that could be a sign of more activity. So you ham radio operators might expect a little bit more noise uh, in your communications over the next few days. Looking at your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the next few days, NOAA has given us about a 30% chance for M-class flares over the next three days. And I've extended that out to about five days because regions 2268, 2271, and that new active region cluster that's growing so rapidly will still be on the Earth part facing part of the disk over the next week uh, before they rotate off. So expect to see a chance for M-flare activity. Plus, we have region 2256 the old region that was very active on the backside, that will be uh, coming into view uh, in the next few days, and it could be an M-flare producer as well. So we haven't experienced a lot of M-flares yet, but the potential is there. So you ham radio operators expect to have a bit more noise and static, perhaps, in your communications over the next few days, and prepare yourself for possible blackouts or disruptions uh, as these regions transit the Earth-facing disk over the next week. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching. Thanks, Dr. T. She's amazing. It, it, just, wow. man, we're going to get her on Skype one of these days and, uh, and yeah. talk to her live and have her explain this whole thing because it's, uh, you know, I, I mean, I've spent a lot of time looking at the sun. Well, no, no you really shouldn't do that. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> that explains a lot. <laughs> kind of, doesn't it? But uh, she did that specifically for Ham Nation, uh, and uh, she's not a ham. 
But of course, being a, a, a solar scientist, she knows what it does to uh, our activities. So uh, she's cool. I'm working on her to get her license. So again, uh, uh, thanks, Dr. T. We appreciate it. And hopefully we'll have that be a, uh, a semi-regular thing. And uh, of course, if anything pops up, we'll, uh, we'll have, her, uh, have her come on and, and, and talk about it. So awesome. Dr. Tamitha Scove. You can watch her on YouTube. Just do a search for Tamitha Scove. And also, she's at, very active on Twitter, uh, at Tamitha Scove. Uh, T-A-M-I-T-H-A-S-K-O-V, one word, all one word, at Tamitha Scove on Twitter. So uh, there you go. Check her out. A great asset to, uh, to what, we, what we do here, George, that's for sure. Because, uh, uh, you know, like I say, I, about the only thing I know about the sun is I look at it and it's real bright. <laughs> yeah. And I just don't think it would look the same with you standing in front of it either, Don. <laughs> or, well, or, well, now, you know, since I lost that 150 pounds, you know, it's, it's not nearly as big an eclipse as it used to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and the moon is not nearly as impressive. No, no. Uh, uh, we, we won't go there. We won't go there this time. No. You tried to you tried to bait me, but I'm not I'm not going there. <laughs> Gordo. You're learning. I just listened on 50.125. I don't hear anything here, so it must be a West Coast phenomenon, or else my antenna is really a dummy load. No, no. I think it was short skip for about an hour, and I'm listening right now on 125, and all I hear is the noise that the good doctor was talking about. No signals anymore. Okay. Well, uh, you know, that's just one of those things you got to try. And uh, I guess it wouldn't hurt if you just left a radio sitting there on the beacon frequency. And when you hear something, hey, you know, it's your time to take off and, and get in there while it's there. Uh, a couple of things. Well, really only one thing I want to mention before we get into our smoke and solder segment tonight. Uh, you know, back at the, I guess it was the end of November, uh, my partner Tommy over at Amateur Logic and I did a pilot episode of our new Ham College program, and we got such good response to that. We're going to begin production of that, and it'll be this Friday at, uh, let's see, 7 p.m. Central Time at AmateurLogic.tv. Uh, go there. We'll we'll have the first pilot episode, and then it'll be posted as well a few days later. Uh, we're really looking forward to uh, making some new hams with that and getting these new hams also active and give them some things to do. And uh, uh, we think it's going to be a good resource. And, uh, and like I say, a lot of good response on that. So we're really looking forward to it. Live.AmateurLogic.tv, Friday night at 7 Central or... What is that? That's uh, 0200 UTC. Well, as we mentioned earlier, Don and I got together this past weekend at the Capital City Ham Fest in Jackson, Mississippi. And Well, Don and I will talk more about that in a minute, though. Right now, let's just take a look at uh, what we do when we get together. Don, it sure is good to see you again, my friend. It's good to be seen, my friend. It's good to uh, be up here in your little neck of the woods from uh, down south Mississippi. Yeah, we, we usually get together here every year. I think you missed last year, though, didn't you? I think I may have. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I think I did miss last year. Uh, I don't know. I, I wake up in a new world every day, so I really, I'm not sure what, what day is today. <laughs> well, what's on your shopping list? I don't really have anything. Um, I was looking for, I've been looking for a Raspberry Pi. And uh, a fellow behind me here, I was talking to him about it, and he said, well, I've got a beagle bone I'll just give you. I think it's out in my truck. Let me go look. As it happens, it's not in his truck, but it's supposed to be in the mail to me Monday. So, hey. And it was gifted to me, so so far all I've spent is uh, 15 bucks for admission and tickets. And, uh, you know, I don't see anything. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I would love to have, but you know, nothing that I, I haven't seen anything. Let me put it this way. I haven't seen anything I like better than money yet. Okay, well. I, I have seen some stuff that I liked here. Uh, a few things I would kind of like to pick up, but yeah, same deal. I haven't run across that one that's just screaming my name yet. Right. That, a couple of things that caught my eye was uh, a couple of really good-looking swan radios back there. Um, and I had a 500CX and let it go several years ago at Huntsville, actually. And um, these look really nicely restored. I didn't see price tags on them. I was kind of afraid to ask, but there was a, a the two, I think that there were, there were like four or five radios, but the cream of the crop I saw was another 500CX and a 700CX. And that's the one that I would really like to have. I'd like to get another tube type radio because I, I, I got my feet wet with the old 500CX, which was a really, really early model. Uh, the Swan gurus told me that this was like serial number 
uh, like number nine off of the uh, off of the ascent, off of the line, so it was like almost a protype. And I let that radio go. Unfortunately, would love to get it back, but uh, I'd like to have a 700 CX. I think just to play with, that'd be fun. Yeah, I saw a, a Gonset communicator set over there. I thought about Bob Howell when I saw it, and I looked at it, and the price was not bad, and it it looked good. But then I realized you had to have crystals. Yeah, yeah, and I I, I realized early on that that. Um, there's a rule of thumb. If I buy something at a ham fest, I have to make sure that it has rounded corners. Yeah. Because if my wife sees it, I know exactly where she wants to put it. So, <laughs> rounded corners, you know. That helps it go easier, huh? A little bit, yeah. A little bit, yeah, exactly. Well, let's take a look around at some stuff. Let's take a stroll. Don, your Jeep looks a little different to me. It's a, it's a, it's a different color. Isn't this nice? Look at this. I, I'm, I'm actually in the process of selling mine. I don't really want to, but uh, kind of in the process. But, man, look at these are, this is just the sweetest thing. I hate putting my back to the camera, but. Yeah, this is not the Heil Pro Set, is it? No, no, that's the that's the predecessor, I think, to the Heil Pro Set. That's the, uh, that's the Heil, that's not, that's just the set. Okay. That's just set. that. That's the set. Yeah. That's that's your that's your that, that's the guy set, GI set. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Government uh, uh, issue set. That's what the, <laughs> that's the guy set. Not to be confused with the Gonset. Yeah. Yeah. Whole different animal. Yeah. Well, I saw the Gonset right over there. They had sold one of them. There's only one left now. I know. I had a Bob Heil uh, flashback for a sec when I saw it. I thought it was, it was the wrong color though. That's right. It wasn't yellow. It wasn't yellow. Look at these. These are sweet. Man, these are nice. You know, my father had one of these when we we were kids, and, boy, it was, um, well, we just thought it was an old, wore-out vehicle, but now I would love to have it. Oh, yeah. I mean, something like this is worth a, a good amount of money. And, you know, back then, man, they just threw these things away. But, uh, yeah, this is, I mean, being the collector car guy and the Jeep guy that I am, this just this is just right in my wheelhouse. And there's three of them here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this one's got, uh, is that, what'd you call that, co-phase twips? Uh, uh, it's, uh, 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 it's for taking tree branches down, I think. So that's for. <laughs> Very nice, man. Just, just it's a, just the the ruggedness of these things. Well, you know, you know, look what they were made to do. You know, they were made to withstand a war, and uh, and they have quite nicely. Just yeah, uh, just I love the military stuff. This is just so cool. Yeah, they've restored these really nice. I I, I don't have any idea what condition they were in before they started. Well, now this one, George, has some patina to it. This is this is um, this is what I like. And you know, they're only original once. As soon as you repaint something or or change something, the originality is gone. And and this has some nice patina. I don't know that this is original, um, but it sure looks like the seats are. Uh, it it may be in too good a condition to be absolutely original. But something like this is very very cool because if you find something like this that's original, and you're maybe you have an old Jeep, you can use this as like a, uh, a time capsule and go back and see it just exactly how it was originally. But, uh, yeah, I like, the, uh, I like the patina on something like this. This is neat. Yeah, I, I don't think these are original, these, no. these seat belts here. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a little on the modern side, but uh, these, these are certainly original to the Jeep and uh, nice original scuff marks in the floorboard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like this. This is nice. And the fuel tank conveniently right here under the driver exactly it keep it warm yeah get body heat to uh, keep it from uh, ice and yeah that's that's neat stuff mm -mm. yeah well my, my father's fuel tank developed a leak so he just took a uh, five gallon can and soldered a, a piece of copper tube in the bottom of it <laughs> and that was his gas tank whatever works right yeah well down the trail it was a, just an old jeep you know i think he paid three hundred dollars for it and Probably had it 20 years and sold it for 300. Now oh, there you go. Nice. Now this one's more like the one my father had. I remember that, you know, the windshield wipers. You could run them manually there. Uh, well, I mean, what what can you say about this? That's got to be a machine gun mount, huh? I would think you uh, put the tube down and the machine gun. The gunner stands back here and shoots over the top of the windshield. That's, uh, you know, what struck me though about this one is the fact that it's got the snorkel and the uh, and the exhaust extension. We could have used that about ten years ago down at my place in Chalmette when Katrina came through. I'll tell you that. Wow. Yeah. That that would have probably been nice. Pretty heavy duty little radio here too. It's mounted nice. Is this? Look, it's got shock mounts on it. It's mounted. Is that, that a rubber donut under there? Sure looks. Like, yeah, it is. So at least some uh, some form of shock mounting, which is kind of cool. I, these are just the these are just the neatest old things, aren't they? They really are. 
Well, this one looks like original tires too, Don. Pretty close. Uh, this one's a lot, lot newer than uh, this one. Doesn't have the cracks that this one over here did, though. But uh, yeah, these are you can still buy these. This is this is definitely not original, but this one over here definitely is with the age cracks in it. But they, I just love these old things. And I do too. Well. Don, I think I'm going to wander around a little bit. There's bound to be an old piece of junk around here somewhere with my name on it. I haven't bought anything yet. What'd you call me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go find something old to look at. <laughs> well, Don, that, that was a fun time. I, I wish you could have been there with us too, Gordo. Yeah, that was a um, I, I love kicking tires and seeing stuff. And by the way, I've got crystals. Look at this. Uh, we've got the crystals for you. So uh, if you need crystals, uh, Don, uh, no problem for that uh, radio. And these are original. I bet I well, know where you got those, too. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I would have known that, Gordon. I would have picked up that Gonset. <laughs> I do that. Anyway, uh, great time, Don. Glad you came up for the weekend. And um, let's, let's do it again soon. I mean, it'll be another year before Jackson, but uh, let's do it somewhere else soon. Well, we're, we'll figure out a, a reason to get together, even if it's wrong, especially if well, it's wrong. Yeah. Yes. Count me in. All the more fun. <laughs> well, you know, last week I asked a question, and I showed three little items there that got their power in weird ways. One of them was a boat, and I said, um, in the boat we just saw capacitors were powering the unit. What's the official name for that type of capacitor? And only about, oh, maybe 10% of the people who entered this week got it right. I was surprised that not more than that did. So apparently you haven't been perusing the catalogs um, like you should, or you would know that those were around. We did have a winner here, though, and that's Bill Boyer, KF5FEI. And he said supercapacitors, usually in the ferrite range. And that's correct, Bill. Uh, that tiny little capacitor is called a supercapacitor. And, you know, it could be uh, one, two, maybe three ferrides. And, you know, when I was, um, when I was in college, uh, the professor told us that a one ferrite capacitor would be as big as a room we were in. Somehow, I, I don't know if it was a shrink gun or what they used, but they've got they've got those things down tiny, and they, they don't put out a lot of power. But you know it's good as a battery replacement in uh, a lot of different projects. They're mostly used to back up memory and stuff like that in small computer projects. So for next week we've got another question here. Oh, by the way, what Bill won? He won this Heil USB Q, a little USB uh, preamplifier and adapter. That you can plug into your microphone, hook a USB cable to your computer, and you've got uh, audio with high and low equalization going to your computer, as well as you've got a headphone jack here on the rear and a volume control for that. So you've got bi-directional audio, but great little device to add to your uh, notebook computer to get some good audio on it. So for next week, I, I think we'll continue the ham fest uh, theme here. What did Don say he wanted at the Ham Fest? Now, if you know the answer to that, then send it to me at hamnationcontest@gmail.com, and you could win this Boy Scouts of America Radio Merit Badge book. Now, I, I know it's um, you know a Boy Scout Merit Badge book, and I would encourage you, if you win this thing, to look over it yourself before you give it to uh, someone who's in scouting, because there's a lot of good information in here, more than... Um, then you might really think a couple of little projects in here too. So if you want to win that, then just tell me, what did Don see at the ham fest that he wanted? Ham Nation I contest. I know that one. I know that yeah, one. Yeah, but you're not eligible, Don. You're not eligible. You you are, uh, were you a Boy Scout? Yeah. So oh, you were. Well, then you should already have the badge. I'll no, I didn't get mine either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, why don't we get Dale to come in here and bail us out? Hi, Dale. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Okay, well, we'll try. Uh, I uh, I had to have a thought, though, when uh, Gordo was leading the sing-along with uh, he's got the whole world in his hands and got to thinking that is what uh, all of us hams have uh, out there in our hands, the whole world, uh, just, just as an example in the last uh, 24 hours, I've communicated with uh, 
Paul in England with some news about the Royal Lifeboat Station special event coming up. Uh, there's Simon in New Zealand. We've been talking to uh, him about how to get George in that uh, loud green T-shirt we had in the Show Me Your Shack last week. And uh, a huge shout-out this evening to half the hams in Madrid. They'll be gathered around their computers this evening to watch their four-antenna shootout. That's coming up. Well, we've got four great videos, so we better get it moving. And uh, Ray Novak has rules if you want to visit uh, ICOM. So that rule, you have to shave first. And uh, let's join Dwayne, KD6, Alpha Foxtrot, and see how that develops. Good morning. Kilowatt Delta 6 Alpha Fox, Dwayne DeSalvo here. And I wanted to show you a video of our recent uh, visit to ICOM headquarters in Kirkland with Ray Novak. But first, I just want to finish my Harry's shave. Man, I'll tell you, I love this Harry's razor. It's yeah. absolutely phenomenal. And the, uh, the gel that comes with it, unmatched. It's incredible. A nice, close, smooth shave. The only bad part is... It's sort of addicting. It gets to the point where that's really all I ever want to do. You know, I find myself shaving morning, noon, and night, but it's a nice close shave. Mmm, really great. Anyway, enough of that. Let me get to the video, and you can see our recent uh, visit to ICOM North America. Hope you enjoy it. On January 5th, Kilowatt Delta 6 Alpha Fox, Dwayne DeSalvo, and his XYL Tony visited the ICOM headquarters in Kirkland, Washington to meet with Ray Novak. Ray showed us around the ICOM Museum area and gave us some of the history that led to the founding of the Inouye Electric Manufacturing Company in 1964 by Mr. Takuzo Inouye. Mr. Inouye built his first all-transistor FDAM1, a one-watt six-meter rig. And this was the beginning of the development of many state-of-the-art amateur radio products under the name ICOM. ICOM has other divisions besides amateur, including land mobile, marine, and computer. Ray showed us the ICOM Ham Shack, November 7 India Hotel, with three different operating stations for multiple operator scenarios. One of the stations has a gold Heil microphone awaiting the installation of the new Gold Edition 7850. I was particularly interested in D-Star technology, and so Ray showed us his ID51A D-Star VHF UHF handheld transceiver and the cool interface he built using a Raspberry Pi computer and a DVAP module packaged in a small Pelican case with a rechargeable battery. A great combo for connecting to the D-Star repeaters from home or on the go. What a great tour, and even the XYL enjoyed it. Thanks very much, Ray, for your hospitality. And 73s from Kilowatt Delta 6 Alpha Fox. Okay, 73, Dwayne. Uh, sounds like uh, Ray did give you a great tour there up in Washington. Well, the Everglades Amateur Radio Club joined forces with the Dade Radio Club of Miami to let local students talk to astronauts on the International Space Station. WSVN News broadcast this report. An out-of-this-world lesson for some South Florida students aspiring to become space cadets. <laughs> yeah, they have a really cool answer to the question, what did you do in school today? Well, they interviewed an astronaut working on the International Space Station. Ashley Morrison has the story. It's not every day you get to talk with astronauts, but Richmond Heights, Miami's exclusive conservation biology magnet high school, and Richmond Heights Middle School made first contact with one of the International Space Station's astronauts, Samantha Cristoforetti, on Thursday. All work and no play can be boring. What do you do for fun up in space? Over. Three students from each school had the opportunity to ask several questions about the scientific experiments on the ISS, as well as life in space. It makes me feel pretty cool. It was like not everyone gets to experience this. It's unique. It feels awesome. It's like a once in a lifetime opportunity and I think that's really cool that I got to do it. It was really cool because um, I've never actually spoken to an astronaut before. Traveling 17,000 miles in space. It was pretty interesting and maybe thinking about maybe becoming an astronaut. I thought it was an amazing experience. 
because I've never actually done anything as big as this and I've never actually done anything as crazy as this and it made me feel really nervous to talk to an astronaut and I felt really great after I talked to the astronaut. The ISS is traveling at a speed of nearly 17,000 miles per hour which limits radio contact time to an 11 minute window. During that time the ISS is traveling directly above the campus. Putting this event together took a lot of work and time. It, it is a lot of work. It requires special antenna systems, uh, uh, radio equipment, and what makes it unique is that the only way this can happen is through amateur radio. It's a once in a lifetime experience that will hopefully inspire these young minds to believe the sky is the limit. I'm hoping that they'll use this experience to, to, to show themselves that or to prove to themselves that they can be anything they want. Dream big, be motivated, and just go ahead and go for your gusto. Go for the gusto. In Southwest Miami Dade, Ash. Okay, well, thanks for the great link, Julio. Julio is Kilo Kilo for Kilo Mike Oscar. He's the president of the Miami Dade Club. That's uh, good PR for amateur radio. The video segment goes international tonight. And uh, how about a four antenna shout out? That's what they called it in suburban Madrid. And with the report, here is Alpha Alpha 4, Golf India Lima. Uh, Madrid, the outskirts of Madrid, in uh, test of material with a few uh, amateur radio fans. Soy José Luis, 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 Luis. We came with a group of friends to try out a few antennas and uh, radio sets. We erected various QRP antennas to test with the FT817. We bought three transceptors, also the ICOM 7100. Uh, a magnetic loop antenna, a vertical antenna with a tunable ground plane, and a vertical antenna with coils tuned for HF, and finally a telescopic mask with a vertical antenna and auto tuner uh, at the base of the antenna. So, uh, we are comparing the performance, the sensitivity of the antennas. It's a fantastic day in the field. A little cold, but fine Eso with the sun. Un día de campo estupendo, hace un poquito de fresco, pero bueno, con el sol se está bien. Ahí. ¿Cómo lo vemos ahí? Ahí está bastante bien, ¿no? No, no, no. José, ahí bien. Como has dicho que con cuidado, os digo. No es. Tres metros y medio tiene esta. José Luis, ¿cómo se llama esta antena? Esta es una de dos. 2 metros 70, 6 metros y lleva la bobina de 40, la de 20, la de 15 y la de 10. Saca un equipo y ponemos. ¿A que acoplar desde el equipo? Sí, sí, sí. Claro. Ah, bueno, que has pisado, pero no es como la 857 que copla automáticamente sin pisar. Le pisas y la copla, o sea, es un... Qué me gusta ese bate. Con el egoísmo ahí, sí señor. ¿Eh? Con el egoísmo ahí, que sí señor. Pues qué bonito el juguete. Bueno, bueno, la sintonización hay que transmitir. Es que ya más se tiene so we found that the performance was comparable. The magnetic loop antenna has uh, less noise and also the advantage of being directional. But more or less, provided we use a good ground plane, we found that they all functioned pretty well.
Well, we thank the amateurs there in Madrid for preparing that uh, great international coverage for uh, Ham Nation. And we appreciate you taking the time to translate the description and interviews for our audience. Are you looking for a new way to promote your ham fest? Well, <laughs> check out this promotional trailer. It was produced by Phil Pritchard. He's Kilowatt Charlie for Japan, India, Yankee. The following is presented for the health and welfare of amateur radio operators everywhere. I wish that doctor would hurry up. Yeah. I've got to make a call. Good morning, Bill. Doc Holliday. Hi. Anne Marie, good to see you. How are you doing, Bill? Not well. Not well. I'm off my feet. Uh, feel nervous and upset all the time. I don't, I don't know. It just all of a sudden came on. Oh. So you're a ham operator? Yes, yes. And and when you operate your ham radio, those symptoms tend to get better? Yes, yes they do. His presentation, his symptoms, and um, everything that I can see on physical examination lead me to make the diagnosis of ham fest fever. Ham fest fever? It's a condition that occurs usually about this time of year and it um, continues, the symptoms may get worse up, up, and, up until, until July. I first saw these symptoms about 11 years ago when uh, the first uh, McMinn County Amateur Ham Radio ham fest occurred. I have found that there is a cure for ham fest fever. It's not like um, we have to let him continue with these symptoms uh, and not be treated. Well, what is it? I mean, he can't look at him. He can't go on like this. Anne Marie, do you have any other questions, or Bill, do you have any questions? I think I understand what we need to do now. Well, I'll just write out the information and the directions you need to begin the treatment. Okay. Very creative approach to promoting your ham fest from Phil Pritchard there. Uh, here's a news tip we just got in from Chris. He's KG6TBB. He's telling Ham Nation that there are three new AWRL videos up on YouTube now, and we'll post the links for those three videos at hamnationvideos.info. Well, next time, it'll be time for another Show Me Your Shack, so be sure to email in your photos with equipment descriptions to Ham Nation videos at TWIT.TV, and you'll see your shack on Ham Nation. Well, to, uh, Monday is Esther's birthday. It's Groundhog's Day. That's why the groundhog's on the computer, computer monitor in the background. And Amanda's up next this evening with the latest from the chat room. But first, let's check out the latest from ICOM. Looking Nitro. for a new rig that combines time-honored analog functionality with the ability to give you safe, hands-free operation via optional Bluetooth module? Check out ICOM's new IC2730A. This dual-band analog-only mobile has a great interface and enhanced radio features for your next 2-meter, 70-centimeter adventure. ICOM's IC2730A is built military tough and has a large high-contrast display, approximately one and a half times larger than its predecessor, the ic 2720 it's got a white backlight for easy readability and independent band controls. Practical 2730A features include wide frequency coverage, VHF, VHF, and UHF, UHF simultaneous receive capability, 50 watts output power on VHF and UHF bands, and 1,052 memory channels. You can combine the IC2730's classic analog functionality with optional Bluetooth compatibility. For hands-free and remote control operation, install the optional VS3 Bluetooth headset and UT133 Bluetooth unit. Wirelessly control the radio with three programmable buttons plus a push-to-talk button. Make sure you visit icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on the IC2730A dual bander and other great ICOM amateur radio rigs.
And you can tune in and enter, enter to win after each episode of Ham Nation. Go to icomamerica.com slash Ham Nation and throw your name in the hat for some great swag prizes like T-shirts and hats. And you can learn how you can win the monthly grand prize drawing for a new radio. Uh, for January, the grand prize is going to be that new IC2730A dual-band analog mobile that we just saw. Military tough construction, larger high-contrast display, 50 watts on VHF, UHF, plus optional Bluetooth compatibility for hands-free and remote operation. So go to icomamerica.com slash hamnation for the official rules and to check out all of ICOM's previous drawing winners. Sign up, good luck, and don't forget to follow ICOM Incorporated on Facebook and on Twitter. Uh, what's that? Okay, I believe we've, uh, we've got a caller calling in here. Uh, uh, caller, go ahead. Oh, it's me. Uh, you remember me? Hi, <laughs> I should Bob. have my call here somewhere. Uh, greetings to everybody. We just walked in the door from uh, being out on the uh, the West Coast, and uh, I thought, whoa, there's, the show's on. So I uh, hurried up and uh, said hello to Brian on the cell phone, and here we are. So hello, everybody. I'm really glad that uh, that we're here. How's everybody, George? You doing okay? Oh, doing great, Bob. It's good to see you again. How was NAM this year? NAM was huge. It was, uh, I've been going to that thing forever, and uh, I think it was bigger than any uh, anyone that I've been to. A lot of people, uh, thousands of uh, vendors, and it was, it was great. And, of course, the best part is we got to spend one night with Susie and Gordo, and uh, that was really great, getting to spend some time. But saw some hams that come by, some Ham Nation uh, fans it's nine that are in the music business. So that was good. And uh, some of our artists were there. So, yeah, it was really good. And uh, uh, I, I look forward to being back next week with everybody. Don, how are you doing, buddy? Did I see you in here? Yeah, I'm awesome, Bob. Good to see your face again. Yes, I, I, you, I guess you have a picture somewhere of me so you wouldn't forget, right? <laughs> yeah, I, it's, I, it's 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 going to be my next tattoo. <laughs> yeah, the PR forty is good enough, and I love it. Amanda, how are you? Everything okay in Colorado? Oh, everything is wonderful. Beautiful, beautiful weather, and uh, Nam this year. Hey, it sounds like it was really a success. So uh, glad to uh, have you on for just a little bit. And yes, I have a picture of you around here somewhere to remind me of what you look like. Yeah, it was good. The National Association of Music Musical Merchandisers is the uh, official uh, uh, tag of that. I uh, uh, I've been going to it since 1959 when I was a demonstrator for Hammond Organ and played. And guess what I did this year? I played in Hammond Organ booth for a while. <laughs> so that it, it's a great show. But we were there, of course, uh, for all of our dealers and especially the international dealers. So uh, carry on. I just wanted to jump in and say hi to everybody. I don't have the chat room up. I just barely got this on. Thanks, Brian, for doing this. So we'll be here till the end. So uh, Amanda, I think it's uh, I think it's all yours. So we'll uh, see what's going on. Well, great, Bob. Thank you. And it's so glad to have you in the show tonight. And uh, I think that's a big surprise for, look at that, big surprise for all of us, really. And um, one big question I had, isn't NAM normally in Vegas or is it always in Anaheim? No, it's been in Anaheim for a long, long time. Uh, Vegas is the CES show, the Consumer Electronics Show, where you have all the gadgets. Uh, this is five halls. We're talking huge halls at the Los Angeles uh, uh, Anaheim, not lost, uh, Anaheim Convention Center, they call it. And they're just, there are literally thousands of vendors from anything from guitar picks to monster PAs. And of course, they have all the, the artists are there. Slash was there playing. Uh, Stevie Wonder stopped by. Uh, on and on and on. There were hundreds of, of artists that come because they're, uh, they're the guys that support them. And, of course, they're in Dorsey's for some of these guys. They play at all these. So it's very noisy, uh, especially the hall that has about probably 500 drum companies in it. And they're all next <laughs> to each other. About wow. noise, oh, buddy. But, yeah, it's all about music, Amanda. 
Very good. Well, it sounds like you guys always have a successful show there. And uh, I think you also sponsor some kind of, um, is it kind of a get together, a happy hour, you say? No, that's the thing that happens at NAB. That's the National Association of Broadcasters, which also happens in Las Vegas. So a lot of okay. shows, that's why we're on the road so much. There's so many of these shows, plus all the other things we do. Very good. Yeah, I got the two confused. I apologize about that. Well, hey, I do have some wonderful announcements uh, tonight, you guys. First, um, my biggest announcement, because I'm so proud because the guy is from Colorado. I'd like to say congratulations, and I think this is also an AR Newsline. Congratulations, Colton. Guess how old this guy is? Five. One, two, three, yep. four, five. Yep. Uh, KE0CRD just got his license. I'm really proud of this little kiddo. I can't wait to meet him. I think I'm going to meet him in about two weeks here at a ham fest. So comes from Colorado. And not only that, but he answered the questions to the test via just verbal. He didn't read them and answer them. Can, I can't even tell you guys what I was doing when I was five years old. I'm pretty sure I was still eating mud pies. So, um... This guy, really smart kid. Colton, congratulations. Uh, you you're, must be a pride and joy to your parents. And I'm glad that they uh, uh, ventured you into this. So I can't wait to hear you on the radio. And um, yay to Colton. Um, a couple other new upgrades or licensees. I'd like to say that WJ9E Mike, he'd like to announce that his girlfriend, Jennifer, just got her tech and general license. So now she's a general on the same day. And her call sign is KD9CWR. So congrats, Jennifer. Can't wait to hear you on the radio. I've talked to Mike a lot on the radio. So excited to meet you on the air as well. One more upgrade we have, K0AVL. Wyatt just upgraded to general in December. So congrats, everybody. Big round of applause. Yay. All right. Uh, with that, I do have some questions. And now I know that Gordo's not here tonight. So, Don, I bet you can answer this for him. Um, why are they burning HTs at the burning sand ham? Why not? Why not? <laughs> yeah, that, that shocked me as well. I, when I saw that, you know, that there were HTs, I thought, oh, great. They got to be like pictures of HTs or they made them out of plywood and tacked them up there. But no, Gordon actually um, actually donated four, I guess, maybe old broken or, or so out of date that they, you know, were not worth saving. Yeah, I mean, Gordon's probably got four million radios anyway. You know, there may have been some old marine radio. But anyway, they were handhelds and they burned them. And I thought that was just cool as it could be uh, you know why if you got them and you're not using them why not have a little fun with them one one last time what so if you got them smoke them yeah, yeah was, exactly that's it <laughs> please kids don't try this at home again i don't know how many times i have to put that disclaimer out there but don't try this at home okay so we're not exactly sure why maybe we'll save that for gordo next week if he's on no. <laughs> okay so some realistic questions here now. I do have a couple. Uh, George, this one I'm going to send out to you. DLR, who's on the chat quite often, and I were discussing about crystals since Gordo had said, I've got some crystals for you. Um, can you tell us the correlation between crystals and ham radio or perhaps crystals and frequencies, George? Well, uh, that'd be kind of, kind of long to do the whole thing, but in a nutshell... They take a tiny sliver of a crystal, uh, usually just a little flat piece. And, you know, crystals naturally vibrate or oscillate. And you can trim them uh, to make them change frequencies. Uh, the size of it changes the frequency of it. And that's how they use to uh, adjust the uh, precision frequencies on a uh, receiver or a transmitter is through crystals. Now, we don't see them as much anymore in the newer rigs, but all the older rigs use them to uh, to have a good stable frequency. Bob, is there anything you can add to that? Absolutely. Uh, here, I have, um, here's one on uh, 3885, and here's one on 7260, and uh, this one's on 70, 7195. And I, let's see, can, let me get out of the way here. You see that little yellow guy back there? Well, um, I don't know if the microphone's long enough here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this. Let's see, I think I can show you. 
there are slots in here that you plug the crystal into. And okay, you plug the crystal right into the slot. Yep. Yep, there's a place for six of them in that old concert, and that's how we select the frequency. Today, we do it by turning a dial. The VFO operates, this crystal is at uh, 5.8 megacycles, and this VFO would be tuned to 5.8. So instead of just being on one frequency, we can move around. Then the technology moved up and it's transceive. So the receiver and the transmitter follow that same VFO. And so could you see that okay, George? Oh yeah, we, we saw it good. And by the way, Don and I saw some Gonset communicators at the Hamfest this past weekend. And I almost bought one, and then I saw that crystal slot, and I said, no, you know, I really don't want to get into crystal collecting right now. And, you know, they used to call oh, those little crystal radios, uh, they used to call the, the ones that were totally crystal uh, controlled, they used to call those rock-bound because you couldn't move off those frequencies, especially the old the CW uh, uh, transmitters and, and receivers back then, you know, that people started off with the novices years and years and years ago. They were, they were rock-bound to that frequency because there was no tuning knob. You just you change frequency by changing crystals, right, Bob? I think I showed this one time on the show. There's three little screws in there. Mm -hmm. You take those screws and, and the plate comes off and there'll be this little sliver of, uh, of crystal. And if you want to raise the frequency, you get out toothpaste and a toothbrush and you just uh, move the old toothbrush up and down on the... Uh, uh, on the crystal sliver, and you can raise the frequency. If you want to lower it, you take a lead pencil and put some lead on it. it, it and then that's how we do it. Yeah, you can't change them very much, but uh, that's how we moved around. But basically, you today, uh, what do you, what do we do with all this old gear? We call International Crystal Company in Oklahoma. They're still in business, and they still make thousands of crystals for all kinds of stuff. Call ICM. International Crystal Manufacturing. It's a fabulous place. I think we did a tour of that here a couple of years ago. Ray and I were there. But anyway, you can still get crystals. So that should answer it for you, Amanda. It, it does. Thank you so much. And by the way, I have a bill from them because we just had some crystals grown, I guess that's what you call it, um, for a certain local repeater here. We had to change the frequency. So we had to order two sets for uh, the transmit and the receive frequencies. So it's kind of cool, though. You grow crystals for frequency. Interesting stuff there. Anyhow, thanks, Bob and George, for your input. I got one more question here. Locally, there's been kind of a 900 megahertz craze, and a lot of people are looking for... 900 megahertz radios, uh, a lot of those around, that's fine. Now they want to know what antennas do I use? Um, Don, George, either one of you guys uh, do 900 megahertz at all? I don't, I don't. but there's a variety yeah. of, of different type of antennas you could use, and they're all going to be really short. You could use a little uh, quarter wave dipole. You could use a Yagi. Uh, you could even use a dish at 900 megahertz. Wow, a dish, Absolutely. huh? Mm -hmm. Yep. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, I, the thing is that I, I, I've i always been one for not having multi-band antennas, especially in the VHF frequencies. Get a specific frequency, uh, uh, the band, and, buy, and get an antenna. They're all little, so you can have a dedicated antenna for 900 megs, dedicated for 440 dedicated for two meters and so on. Uh, it, it really works well if you do it that way. So uh, look around and it's very inexpensive, but you know what? Hey, George, don't you think we should build them? Uh -huh. Oh, yes, uh -huh. we should build them because they're, they're not very big and they're pretty easy to build. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I like that idea. And um, let me explain to you why 900 megahertz is going to going crazy here. It's not your typical repeater frequency or anything else, but we have a lot of tourists coming through here and they do a lot of weather net skywarn as do a lot of uh, states during the summer seasons. And they want to have some back chatter about weather, things that they can pass back and forth that maybe a lot of local tourists won't be listening to so that they a don't freak them out about crazy weather stuff or 
just to um, kind of discuss maybe road conditions, things like that, before they let the public know on two meters or 70 centimeters. So it is kind of a nice um, alternative. So you guys, it, I, I'm not exactly sure how it's going to work out for us here locally, but we'll see. Um, with that, you guys, that's about all the questions I have tonight. And uh, it's been a great, great show. Nice to have you, Bob. And so I'll send it back to um, George. Take it away. You guys have a good, good night. Okay, Amanda, thank you. I've just noticed in the chat room here, uh, Bob, our friend JD in Zero IRS says that he runs 900 megahertz sideband and CW and his longest distance was 637 miles. And that's pretty amazing at 900 megahertz. Yeah. There's only one situation. It was JD. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. It's yeah. Zero RS. He is a real fantastic uh, VHF, UHF, and beyond uh, operator. And he's, he focuses on that. So, yeah, he does a lot of great things. That's great. Hey, guys, I, I got to run. You guys finish up the show. Sarah needs to unload the suitcase, and I got to go get it out of the car for her. So thanks for letting me barge in here. We'll see you all next week. I'm really excited about next week. We're going to have the American Legion Radio Club. If any of your, your father, uh, mother, any of your relatives uh, are in the war or any kind of service and they belong to the American Legion, they have their own amateur radio station. And they're going to be on here from that station next week. I'm really excited about this. So we will be here next week. And uh, I really appreciate you letting me barge in. So go ahead, George, and so long, Don, and Amanda, and Brian, and all of the chat room. We'll see you next week right here. Take care. All right. Thanks, Bob. We're so glad that uh, you did make it home in time and jumped in here with us for a few minutes. We had Gordo earlier, and he had to leave, but uh, it was great to have you in here to kind of help us round out things toward the end, and we'll look forward to seeing you again next week. Well, Don, and I'll ask you the question I usually ask you, and I don't know why. Any uh, final words of wisdom? <laughs> no. No wisdom. No, for me. No, yeah. No. Well, it, it was a joke. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. I well, I have a good to see words. you again, Amanda. Any? Well, I'll ask you. Any final yeah, words of wisdom? Oh well, you know. First of all, I can't beat Tamitha. Oh my gosh, she is so smart. Don, thanks for bringing her on the show. Um, or getting a video from her. That was great. Uh, Isn't she awesome? We're gonna have her live as soon as we can on Skype. So that'll be great. cool. Yeah, she's she's a sweetheart. I, I asked her, uh, you know, if she would do something for us. She says, "Oh my God, yes, anything." Thanks for educating these people about so solar weather. So yeah, she's real. She's pumped. Her words. I am pumped to be part of Ham Nation. So she's excited. She's so smart. I, I see her. I follow her on Twitter now because of you. And yep, she's got some words of wisdom for sure. So I can't top that. But I forgot, you guys. I'm listening to um, a couple of my friends are watching. And I have to say hello. Katie Zero, MDP, and his son, Matt. And I'm sorry, I can't remember your call sign, Matt. But his son is about eight years old. So thanks, you guys, for watching tonight on Ham Nation. I really, really appreciate that. Um, that's all I've got tonight. You guys have been great. And nice to have Bob pop in there tonight. Um, take Take it away, George. Well, thanks, Amanda. It's good to see you again, and we'll look forward to seeing you and Don both again next week. Uh, before we go, for those of you watching live, of course, we have nets after the show every week. The 40-meter net tonight is going to be on 7.278 megahertz. The 20-meter net, and I checked in just a few moments ago with Steve and Bill over there, and um, band was still good, so you might want to give them a shot on 14.270 megahertz. Uh, Cheryl is going to be on 75 meters at 3.847 megahertz. And we've got digital modes too. If you want to get in on Echo Link, it's star do drop in star or node number 355800. And for D star, reflector 14 module C. With 73, everyone, we're glad you could be here with us this week. And we'll see you back again next week when we've got the whole crew here. Good night. <laughs>